we have uh, uh, we have an eight thirty ninety eight, and uh, the description says. Uh, let's see what the description is. Description says uh, black screen. So uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Let me try to minimize the light. Uh, you have the keyboard back right uh, so so the reason why that is important is uh, it's because you want to confirm that when you have an issue of a, of a black screen you want to confirm the the issue it's a uh, you want to confirm that the device is actually posting uh, because if the device is not posting there is no need to um, worry about uh, uh, image on the screen so the fact that the device is posting, I mean, that we can confirm from uh, the keyboard, uh, the keyboard backlight. And also we have a uh, caps lock. Uh, caps lock is also on that. That, that tells us that uh, the device is, it's, it's in a working state. Uh, the only issue we have is uh, the, the, the screen not being, uh, not getting anything on the screen. Now, so that can be an issue of the screen not being detected. And also that can be the issue of, uh, uh, say um, and and the screen not being det detected can be caused by a number of things and that can also be uh, a case of a backlight issue. So what you want to do is uh, we want to go ahead and open up the back of the machine. Let's see why is that not working? Okay, so let's open up the back of the machine. If this is a 20, um, 2013, 20, um, 2012, then this is most likely an issue of uh, um, U9800 uh, but uh, let's see and uh, if it's uh, if it's if it's a 20 if it's a, a 20 late 2013 or, or uh, and then early 2014 then uh, yeah then this that may not be the issue okay so this is this is a 20 this is an early 2013 and uh, uh, least 2012 so this is uh, this is 100 percent most likely an issue of uh, u9800 so what you want to do it's i uh, want to uh, just to be sure just just to confirm so let's open up the board view uh what you want to do is you want to confirm that we have so let me open up the board view now this is going to be an 80 dash uh 332 i suppose uh it's been a long time since I worked on that board. It should be uh, it is a dash two two three two. It should be this guy here. Okay, yeah. So this is it. So what we want to do now is we want to see that we have power going to um to to our screen. So let's quickly open up. So to do where well, you know where where we need to do that is by the screen connector which is j9000 and obviously we will be utilizing the inductor uh which which we uh, to to the screen connector let me also open up the board view uh, uh the schematic I'll give you guys a better so we have a better idea so it's it is a dash so um it is a dash one two three two Uh, and then let's go to J9000. Okay, so if we here are J9000, in order for um, to talk about screen being detected, we need to make sure that we have um, this here. Uh, this row has to be present, which is um, uh, PP3V3, uh, which is uh, 5 volt. Uh, three, uh, three point three. So that is going to. We should find that on pin twenty eight, pin twenty nine, and then pin thirty. So look at that. And also, uh, what other there? Yeah. So again, this one. So again, like this. Okay. Okay, so we want to first of all confirm the power rail that are going to the machine. That will give us uh, that will give us an idea that indeed uh, we have uh, voltage to the screen, and that will mean that the screen is actually detected. So let us uh, head back to our board here.
uh, and head back to our board view. And then on our board view, uh, we are not going to worry right now about the PPV out. Yes, which is the, the backlight line. We are still going to check that, but right now we want to see what we have on pin 9. We want to see on we want to see what we have on uh, pin 28, 29, and pin 30. So uh, we want to confirm that indeed we have a voltage going to the machine, which will which will suggest that uh, the screen is being detected. So that is uh, we will be utilizing this inductor here. Uh, we switch our multimeter to voltage mode, black probe to ground, and then our real probe to our inductor. Let's, uh, let's see. And that is zero volt. Uh, so that means we are, our screen is not being detected. Okay, so let us just confirm that our multimeter is working. Let's see what we have on our PP bus line. Okay, multimeter is working. Let's try that again. Okay, we get in zero volt. So uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to take the board out and head over to uh, U9800 and uh, see if that is what we are dealing with. So we first we will have to first deal with that and then uh, uh, another thing we, we, we also wanna I also want to check it's when the machine starts. Let's see if we have a quick screen detection. Uh, so let me, let me try, let's, let's, let's see, just uh, confirm this. So when the machine starts, let's see if we have a, a quick screen detection. And no, we don't get anything. Okay, so let's just go ahead and take the board out and then head over to our uh, U9800. So the reason why we're heading straight to our U9800 is because uh, I, I have I have done a video on uh, on the uh, common failures of especially relating to to displays on the um, twenty twelve uh, early twenty thirteen e thirteen ninety eight. So this is a common failure um, where you you have a U ninety eight hundred, which is uh, which is uh, a mox. Uh, no, 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 not a mux, uh, not, not a mux, uh, not a mux, uh, not a mux. But basically, you uh, uh, you have a U9800 failing, and then as, as, as a result, uh, you don't have a uh, display on your primary screen. I mean, there are, there are multiple ways, uh, there are multiple uh, scenarios you get from a, a failing a U9800, uh, but one of them is you getting a black screen. So let's head to U9800 and see if that is uh, what the case is. So one of the things we want to do is we want to give it like a a quick reflow. And that will you know that will help us determine if the issue is uh, related to U9800 uh, or if the issue is uh, screen related. So let's uh, but first and first let us uh, head over to U9800 and then we'll take it off from there. Okay, the board is out. Just gonna put the shell on the side. So our U9800 is gonna be on the other side. Uh, this is uh, U8900. Um, I keep saying U9800, so it's U8900. So, um, so the, it's, uh, let's flip the board to the other side. And uh, this is our U8900. Just gonna give the board a quick dust. Mm. So we have a we have a bit of a a situation here, but that that is not related to to the display. Let's, let's check that section of the board. 
here um, let's see where uh, that's audio and uh, around it do we have anything that's really relating to display no we don't have anything and move here it's going to the screen so now nah, so yeah there's nothing to worry about there that's not related 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 to our primary issue okay so this is u9800 so what are u8900 so what you want to do is you want to give it a, a quick reflow and then uh, try it again So the reason why I'm referring you you it's a 900 is uh, so the way the chip fails is over time what happens is uh, you get the the, 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 the pins on, on the chip tend to um, separate from the board and then that causes a partial uh, a, a, a partial uh, communication issue and when that happens is uh, the primary uh, 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 the, the GPU will obviously will seem not to be detected, so to so, so to say, so U it's U eight thousand, which is the GPU, which is uh, the GPU will not be de de detected. So let us uh, head over to the schematic. Um, so U U eight nine hundred U eighty nine hundred. So what it says, it's a GFX IMV PV co-regulator. So uh, this is basically what regulates, uh, 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 this is uh, the power rail uh, for, for, for your graphics. So over time, what happens is you find that the chip tend to have a partial dis disconnection from the board, and that affects uh, the function of, uh, of the chip. So what we have just done, the reflow is to uh, basically uh, to allow the chip to, to maintain or to allow the chip to regain its uh, communication uh, once again so we have done that so so it doesn't fail as such that the chip itself become faulty it's just that you get a, a partial separation of or, or the components uh, or the pins on, on the chip not making proper contact uh, uh, to the board and then that causes the problem so it's not like the chip itself fails so we having to do a reflow to it uh, it's a way of having to uh, reconnect or to resolder uh, the chip so after, uh, with that done let's try and see if that changes anything uh, that uh, we kind of gave a bit of uh, time for the boards to cool off And uh, to test this, we can just have the screen connected as well as uh, just this, the screen cable connected and uh, we use a charger. We, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to connect the battery to get it uh, running. In some cases, uh, obviously, uh, say if you have like a lower, uh, a lower charger, say like a 45 watts, you may want to connect uh, uh, the battery. But in this case, we have an 87, uh, 85 watts, so that should work.
Okay, so we have a spinning fan. Now let us see. Initially, uh, we we were expecting to have five volt on our L nine nine thousand. We're expecting to have voltage there. So let's see if we have voltage there. And yes, we have five volts. So and I mean that it suggests that we kind of have activity on the screen. And if you guys can see, we have uh, a shining apple logo at the back. I suppose we should have a question mark folder. Uh, any moment from now. And that's it. So our issue was indeed uh, U8900. So, uh, and that's uh, how you fix an issue that is related to U8900. So um, th there was a recall program for uh, for this board. However, the recall program has long ended. Apple had uh, had a recall program for this, and and then one of the ways Apple would fix it is Apple would put a, a piece of material uh, on top of the chip itself to keep the uh, to keep pressure on the chip. Um, that was and, and but then but then again that was uh, that was a long time ago and uh, the recall has long ended. Uh, so uh, that's about it. Uh, we are just uh, going to clean the board and uh, then the device will go into the next phase, which is to get the device uh, 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 assembled and then the testing will be done and then uh, the device can be finalized. Thank you guys. I will see you guys uh, in the next one. As you guys can see, uh, we obviously started. The, uh, uh, the troubleshooting to identify uh, what exactly the issue is to define the state of the device and then we had to head over to U89, uh, U90, U8900 and then the reason why we had to do so is because of our familiarity with the common figures of uh, 820-3332 uh, uh, which is a 20, uh, 2012 and 802013. Uh, if this was, if the board was not uh, 2012 early 2013 the, the, the approach we took now would be different we will have to take a different approach thank you guys i'll see you guys in the next one